Right, hello everybody. We are uh, looking now at how to construct a DMX fixture patch from um, within the UI, so we can actually start to operate our fixture. So to do that, we've we've just made our uh, two fixtures. Uh, we're not going to look at Sharpie Plus, but it's useful to have it there. The Mania is patched to address one, um, and we're going to try and call that out of the DMX subsystem in our Blueprint widget that we we're working on earlier. So this is the widget with the UI in it, and we want to be in the graph mode. And in here, we're going to start building a Blueprint um, set of nodes, which are going to call out the fixture patch. So the first thing we're going to do is to access the DMX subsystem. So to do that, I'm going to right click um, and type in DMX subsystem. Where is it? There we are, get DMX subsystem. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this a lot quite, you know, so far in the tutorial. Subsystems are things that live within Unreal, which have enormous control. They, uh, they, they set a load of actions up that um, can live within Unreal that does something like, for instance, sending or operating DMX. Uh, Copper Candle, we have our own subsystems we develop for our protocols, so Copper Stream for DMX sending uh, with low latency, and Bone Stream for sending low latency motion capture data over the internet. So we have subsystems as well as part of the plugins that we sell. So a DMX subsystem, we can drag off this pin, and with the context menu, we can see all the things that are accessible. Obviously, I've just put it behind my, my own picture, so I'm gonna move it up here so you can see. So DMX subsystems, uh, potential nodes. Everything we want really is in the DMX modes here. So we've got, uh, you know, get an attribute label, which is kind of useful if you want to know what something's called. Um, get the fixture attribute. So if you want to know what what attributes have been used in the fixture itself, we can send the DMX to the output port. It's one we were using earlier. Uh, we did it without clicking on the DMX subsystem. One we want right now though is get all fixture types in library. Is it, or do we want all fixtures? One second. We want get all fixtures in library, which is a significant difference. Um, so I'm going to click out. Let's do that again. I'm going to just type it in this time. Get all fixtures in library. There it is. Fixture types is different, of course. Fixture types will be selecting what is the uh, all the different types. I've got two types of lights, but I actually want to get the actual patched fixtures here. Um, now we need to call the library that we're using. We've only got one library in our project. We, we built it ourselves. It's called DMX library. Now you could build a, you know, another variable here that you could operate to switch the libraries if you needed to. And we've got an action pin, an execute pin that we need to, we need to give it an event to tell it to work. Now we could do what we did before and have a slider control this and tell it to pull a fixture out. But the DMX subsystem kind of needs to work all the time. It might not be the most efficient way. There might be a way for you to do it so that it only sends DMX or looks for DMX on the click of a button or when an operator is changed in the UI. Uh, but just for ease, I'm going to set it up as an event tick. So I had this node earlier that I showed you. I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to connect it up. And now that is going to send an event to this node and all the nodes that follow it every frame, every cycle of the computer. So that could be 30, 60, 120 frames a second. Um, it's quite resource intensive, so you don't want to use event ticks too much, but you know, they do have their place. And actually on modern computers, particularly when we're doing something that's quite, it's quite efficient anyway, you know, we're not going to render anything. The computer's not processing too much data here. So um, don't worry about it for now. Just something to think about with other projects. So we now have um, a fixture and I want to print what the fixtures are into my screen. I'm using another print string so I can see exactly what is um, is happening on this node. I don't know yet. You know, it's a it's a new node to me. I don't know what's coming out. It's, it's just something I want to figure out. Um, now I've got a return value. Now we recognize that symbol. It's an array. We were using arrays earlier. I can't click and drag that on there. It doesn't like it. An array has got too much information. It wants me to filter it before putting it into the print string. So what I need to do, if you remember from the first couple of lessons, is to do a get command. So get, get a copy, will allow me to convert that wider range, uh, wide array of, of information and filter it down and only provide one bit of data into my print string. So let's drag that out so you can see what's happening. It's converted the object type into a name, so it's gonna convert whatever it thinks it is into the name of the thing it is and send that to the print string. How do we know, though, 
which of the fixtures it's finding. Well, that's what this number here is doing, zero. So it is going into the table. Imagine a table that's all rows and columns like a spreadsheet. Uh, you've got all of your data coming across on the columns. And then this number here determines which row we're reading at any point in time. It'll only read one at a time. And we've, at the moment, chosen zero. And I could change this to, I'm not going to use that keyboard. I keep making mistakes. Uh, four, for instance, or, or two. Um, but zero will be the first fixture that we loaded. And if we go back to our BMX library, we see we've got two fixtures in here that are patched. We created the mania first. That'll be fixture zero. And Sharpie Plus, I assume, will be fixture one because that's the next one that's in the patch. But we have been playing around quite a lot, so maybe there's been other ones created before, so it might have a different number. So we actually want to check a range of values here. So if we go back to our console, I can't edit this number once we're in play mode. I want to be able to change it and keep seeing this print string update on my screen. So ideally, I would expose this in some way to the game so I can edit it. Now with a normal blueprint class, you could do this and see it in the editor. Uh, but with a UI, it's kind of hard to see the UI because it's not loaded when you start. So I'm actually going to add a slider. I'm just going to create what I'm going to call a debug slider. That's going to change this value so we can check it. So I'm come back in here, add another slider. Let's drag that out. I'm going to call it uh, debug. Um, what is it? Fixtures. And that will tell me what it's doing. I'm going to come down to the bottom here and do a on value changed command again. Click on that. It's added this in. Now, if I want to, I could have done what I did earlier and connect the execute pin up to, say, the DMX fixture library or into the print string. But actually, that, would, that wouldn't be necessary here. We've already got the, the, the tick command sending data, uh, telling them both to work all the time. The only thing we really need from this actually is the value. The value is, is giving us uh, information on what uh, where the slider is at and therefore what number it should make that zero change to and print that. I could take this execute pin and put it straight to the print string and it'll then only print when I change the value of that slider. But that's enough for now. I'm, I'm happy just to have the value from it. When we go back into the designer mode, uh, what we didn't do is change the values here. Now before we did zero to two, five, four. Now like, there could be an infinite number of fixtures in this project. Um, I know I've only got two. I don't know how many fixtures it thinks we've got. So I'm just gonna set the maximum value to 10 for now. Aha, I've done it again. Force is muscle memory to always use the numeral keypad to operate the um, uh, to, to type things in, and it's also operating OBS, which is doing all this switching. So I now have my slider. Uh, it's got the values zero to, to ten. So if I go back to my graph, if I now drag the slider across, it will send a value of zero to ten. It will convert it to an integer, which is going to be a solid number, not a decimalized number. It's going to tell the get to call that fixture in the table. So if I've chose the sliders at one, it will call fixture one from the array and print the name of it on my uh, editor. So let's compile and save and see if that works. And hit play. And then because it's running in tick, it's constantly updating that. So you saw how quickly that's coming. That's, this is constantly refreshing. It's, it's staying there for two seconds. If I drag my slider, it's going to update the value Oh look, and it's changed to four. So when I got to what I'm assuming is fixture four, it is um, telling us there's a fixture there. So we're now calling fixture four, and up here I'm not calling anything. So calling fixture zero. Up here I must be in around about one by now. It's not seeing anything. Fixture four, and and now I've. I'm outside the range of, of where it's got any fixtures, so there's no fixtures up there. So there, so I now know that there's two fixtures. They're called patch fixture zero and patch fixture four. So if I go back into oh, my widget, so the, back into the UI, if I just turn this off for a second, this value here, there is a fixture at zero. We know that now. This is why print strings are so useful. They help you understand what's actually going on. So I have a fixture at zero and I have a fixture at four. Not use that keyboard. Um, so what do we do with this now? Well, I could just leave this at zero. That that would work. You know, it, we know there's a fixture there. But I'm going to leave this connected because it's handy to have a debug tool in the engine. What we need to do now is to get information um, out of the fixture. So we've we've broken down the entire universe 
um, from this DMX library. Well, in fact, we've broken down all the fixtures in the library, got it to one by selecting just the first fixture, which is our mania. And now we need to break it down further to get the values, the attributes. So we are going to do a, another tool called get attribute. So in fact, let me just delete this print string for now. I'm going to delete this bit and move the print string out of the way because we'll use it later. So we need to do another get. We'll drag out of here. The context menu will help us find what we're looking for. Um, we're looking for something that will get our values out. So we've got a fixture patch here that could be in there. And we've got the, so remove fixture from patch library. No, I don't want to do that really. Create fixture patch in library. That's not what we're doing now. It's useful to know you could do that. You could create a fixture from your UI. Send some DMX. Yeah, we've done that already. So let's go into fixture patch. We're looking for get attribute value. There we are, or get attribute values. Oh, now which one do we want? Let's go with this one. Um, let's just have a look though. Let's type in get attribute values and compare them because that'll be interesting. Get attribute values. So they are slightly different. In this one, Oh, that's DMX actually, guys. That's, that is different from what we were just selecting there, wasn't it? Because we were looking at fixture patch, get attribute values. Yeah, that's no, it's very similar. It doesn't have the ability to choose what the attribute is. It just gives you all the attributes. That is useful later on when we're trying to keep things neater because everything's already contained into a map, which is like an array. It condenses all that data into a single, um, a single line of data. But at the moment, actually, we want to break it all down. It'd be really helpful to see the fixture broken into little bits. So we've got the attribute, which is color. Uh, all the attributes that we could see earlier in the DMX library are here. Um, now we've got six fixture types or six attributes in our mania. So let's go up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six in our mania. And you see all of these, um, all these attributes here, are the same ones we just saw in the in the option here, these are all the same because you've got the option to call them all out. Uh, if we did do the Sharpie, there's a lot more features. Got, there's quite a lot more fixtures here that we we wouldn't necessarily want to, to call. So there's too, too many attributes at the moment just for us to do some testing with. This is where having the map contained into a single um, uh, well, into a single map is useful rather than breaking it down. But I want to show you what's happening. So we're, we're splitting it apart. So let's take the get attribute value information. Uh, we need to connect in the execute pin and it's going to collect the color information and it's going to return that as a value which we could then send to our print string. And we will connect the execute pin back up again. And I like to try and keep things neat, try and line it all up. Okay, there is actually a way to do this. You highlight what you want and you right click alignment straighten connections, it does its best to try and keep it all nicely in line. Just sort of OCD-ness, which is really handy when you're doing this. So I'm gonna change that attribute to uh, dimmer. So we're gonna see the dimmer information now. Okay, um, so hopefully, now if I compile that and save, let's see what it produces. Just like the other system, I don't know what this node does. I haven't used it before. Um, in reality, I have, but you know, when you're approaching these new systems, let's just keep print stringing things and see what happens. I'm going to click play, and it's giving me a zero. So if I change my fixture type, that's not doing anything. If I change this dimmer here, well, that's sending DMX straight out of the Artnet node. It's not sending anything to the fixture in the patch, so it's not doing anything. It's just sending lots of zeros. So what it's telling me is that the intensity is set at zero. Right. Oh, well, I've got loads of message errors now. So sometimes I'll give you this. Uh, don't ignore it like I'm about to do. Um, it will tell you what is going wrong with your fixtures. So there we go. So now we've we've called out a whole load of information about our um, about our project uh, about 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 the the fixtures. So we need to work out now how to get data into it. Now I'm just going to load up my my scratch project to to double check and where is the there it is. So we now need to put that into an output that sends it straight to the light. So what we're going to do now, we, we're not going to input this data into the patch. We've got the patch information out. We're now going to send it directly to the light, the same way we did earlier. So we were using the first time on value changed, it would create a, uh, a map that would then send to the DMX output port. And we know that this one here was the intensity. 
which is dimmer. Okay, so we could take all of this. Let's disconnect that. Let's disconnect this. We're just going to borrow this bit here. Remember, Alt and click is for disconnecting things. Um, and we are going to, I'm going to leave the print string in there. Let's send that over there. And connect the return value up to ooh, there. And I'm going to set that back to, wasn't it one, I think, was the intensity when we did it. So that is now going to send raw information out from the fixture patch to Artnet. Um, now, if we wanted to have more of these, just copy and paste, Control-C, Control-V, um, we could then make that one pan. And we know that pan was five and six, so let's just create some more of these pins. So I've got key, I'll keep trying to use that keyboard, key two, key three, key four, key five, and we'll need one more, let's do key six. So key six is value six. And all these values are at zero at the moment. That's fine. Um, we'll connect the pan up to, I think it was five. We'll just do it for now. There we go. And we'll do one more just to demonstrate. Control C, Control V, and return value for this one into value six, which I think was tilt. So let's set that to tilt. Right, now I've got a couple of execute pins. Now if I want to connect that up, Ooh, it's disconnected the first one. That's no good. So what do I do? Now I could put them all in a line, which is nice and neat. Um, what that means is it gives information to this one first, and then it moves on to this one, then it moves on to that one. Um, and it's it's absolutely fine. It, it's very normal to do that. Uh, most, you know, as you can see, everything follows this flow. I quite like to use sequences, which kind of do the same job, but it just looks a bit neater on the screen. It still does things in order, but it will, uh, break it down into, um, it's basically like having an adapter that can spread the data out. So I'll type in sequence, there we are, and it's given me a special node there, and it's got zero goes, and then one will go, and then we can add more pins. So we can create that one and that one. So now when it gets data, so the event will tick, it's going to call all fixtures in the library, and then it's going to split that event into three and continue on. So we are then sending all that data to the make the map, and that make the map is converting it back into a map. Uh, well, it's like an array, but it's like a, a, a mission together of all of these values into a new map that goes into the DMX output, okay? Um, now I've done this, but absolutely nothing's gonna happen because we're not sending any data to the fixture at the moment. Um, if I compile this, oh dear, what's going on here? Oh, target, I haven't connected my target up to the DMX subsystem. So all of these need to know that they are talking to the DMX subsystem. Why won't it connect? Ah, oh, no, it needs something from the get, sorry. So the get can send to all of those. Okay, and I'm just gonna move that down just so it's more obvious what's going on. So there you go. Now when I compile and save, there we go, it lets me do that. So if I go into my DMX console now and I hit play, it's got loads of zeros because intensity is running at zero. Uh, if I go to my channel monitor, absolutely nothing is sending. Set that to zero, just to double check. No, nothing there, nothing there, um, because it's not getting data. But we are now connected up so that anything that's coming from uh, one system will be sending to another. So what I'm going to do now is in the, in the next lesson, we are going to go, go into how to send data into the DMX fixture patch. Uh, using exactly the same set of tools, and we'll use that to control the objects um, and the actual light. So that'd be awesome. See you there.